Welcome back. My name is Grant, and this is the Video Boys review for The Man with the Golden Gun. Uh, the Man with the Golden Gun is the second James Bond movie to star Roger Moore as James Bond, and the ninth James Bond movie overall. What do you know about a man called Scaramanga, 007? Scaramanga? Oh, yes. The Man with the Golden Gun. So, in this movie, James Bond faces off against Francisco Scaramanga. He's an assassin who always uses a golden gun. And he's decided to build an even bigger golden gun that's powered by the sun. Now that's what I call solar power. That's what I call trouble. Scaramanga is definitely the strongest part about this movie. Uh, for the first time in a Bond movie, we see that James Bond is facing off against a villain who is definitely his equal, both intellectually and physically. In the past, it seems like all the villains have either had to choose between being physically strong or intellectually superior. So it's a nice refreshing change of pace that Scaramanga seems to be both. In the first scene of the movie, Scaramanga is established as being financially powerful and physically skilled in that he's able to have his own island, he has his own butler, and he's able to defeat an opponent even when the odds are against him. Scaramanga seems intent on challenging himself and even has his henchmen manipulate the funhouse in order to make his kill more difficult for him. He also seems to have sort of a love-hate relationship with James Bond. On one hand, he built a statue of him. But on the other... Scaramanga is immediately established as a threat in the story when a letter is written to MI6 declaring James Bond to be Scaramanga's next target. Fearing for Bond's life, M decides to remove him from the case for his safety. M believes that James Bond needs protecting for his own safety. M later changes his mind though, and he allows James Bond to travel to China to track down Scaramanga. M also tells James Bond to bring Agent Mary Goodnight with him. Several people who saw this movie have criticized it for having a weak supporting cast, aside from Bond and Scaramanga. So let's go over some of these characters. Mary Goodnight is the main Bond girl of this movie. She is another secret agent who is assigned to tag along with Bond, but she's probably the worst secret agent ever. In this scene, we see that Mary Goodnight is bad at maintaining a low profile. Madam, would you be good enough to move this inverted bedpan? I'm sorry I'm late, James. In this scene, we see that she is unable to be sneaky and plant a homing device on Scaramanga's car. Instead, she gets captured and is taken prisoner to Scaramanga's island, where she's forced to spend the rest of the movie wearing a bikini. Ah, oh, Miss Goodnight. I like a girl in a bikini. No concealed weapons. I could stay here forever. Even when she's inside the trunk of the car, she does not seem to realize that because she is carrying James Bond's car keys, this presents a problem. Oh. Good night. Where are the car keys? Oh, I've got the keys. And I've got the Solex, too. She is also unable to tell whether the vehicle she is in is moving or not. I think we've stopped. But the flying car is actually pretty cool. Even when she breaks out of captivity, she seems to only make trouble for Bond, and she's not able to help in any way. First, it's her fault that the island is about to explode. Don't you believe in signs? We've got about five minutes before his body temperature raises that helium well above zero. Then this whole damn place will go sky high. I'm sorry, I didn't know. Then, it's her fault that Scaramanga's giant sun gun gets activated. Hit the master override switch! The what? Good night! Yes, James? Now listen carefully. There's a console up there. Now there must be a scanner interlock button on it. Push it! Good night, are you still there? It'll be on the auxiliary feedback circuit. Oh, you then, when Bond yells at her to fix it, it's a bunch of clouds that block the sun that solve the problem, and not her. Good girl, good night! You've done it! Oh, I have! 
Having M arbitrarily tell Bond to bring Goodnight with him on his mission is actually a really lame way to incorporate a Bond girl into the movie. In fact, there's this other side plot where another character, Andrea Anders, who's Scar among his assistant, and it's actually more interesting than the story between James Bond and Mary Goodnight. So here, Bond discovers that it was Anders and not Scaramanga who originally sent M the threatening letter. And she did it because she was afraid of her boss and she knew that Bond was the only man capable of stopping him. This is a much more interesting story than simply bringing a girl along for the ride. And it even makes Anders different enough from characters in past movies so that we don't just get another magic penis storyline. Unfortunately, Scaramanga figures out what Anders is up to and he kills her. Alright, so this is Nick Knack. Nick Knack is Scaramanga's butler and henchman. A lot of people feel like he doesn't really belong in this movie, but I don't really have a problem with him. He isn't really in enough scenes for me to get annoyed by him, and he does have a stupid little voice. Monsieur, I will remind you this is a duel à la mort. But to me, it just sort of adds to my hopes that Bond will kill him. And I feel like that's how I'm supposed to feel about a Bond villain, right? We also get the return of this character, Sheriff J.W. Pepper. Uh, he was a character in the last movie, Live and Let Die. Here we can see that he is on vacation in China, and he sees James Bond in the background while he's riding the Jungle Cruise. Still, if there was one thing I would change about this movie, it would definitely be the lame karate scenes. They really feel out of place, not only for a Bond movie, but even within the context of the rest of this movie. So in this scene, Bond is in China and gets ambushed by Nick Knack and two sumos. Okay. Uh, he gets knocked unconscious and he wakes up in a hell hole. Take another minute in this bell hole. After eating more rice and sipping some tea, the Bond escapes from the hell hole by running through the wall. Next, he is confronted by an entire school of karate students who try and stop him. Luckily, he's rescued by two schoolgirls who defeat every last karate master for him. Aspects of the movie that feel borrowed from other genres not only cheapen the franchise, but they cheapen spy movies as a whole. When Dr. No premiered way back in 1962, a standard was set for what a spy movie is. By taking things from other genres, genres, it almost feels like the Bond producers are losing faith in the original vision established by Ian Fleming. Luckily for us, they don't take the karate stuff too far and we get back to the main point of the movie and the stuff that we actually care about, like Bond fighting Scaramanga. On the whole though, I really liked this movie. Uh, all the things that people don't like about it really only seem to highlight the thing I do like about it. Scaramanga is an excellent villain, and it's made clear in this movie that even though James Bond has never met his match before, neither has Scaramanga. This will be the first and only time that these two will meet each other, and it's definitely a big epic showdown. The weak and often incompetent nature of the supporting cast only accents how exceptional both Bond and Scaramanga are at what they do. It's absolutely clear in this movie that no good guy is capable of killing Scaramanga other than Bond, and no bad guy is capable of killing Bond other than Scaramanga. In a weird way, even the choice of China as the setting also highlights this theme. So when you look at all the characters in this movie, other than Bond and Scaramanga, we see that there are only women and short men. So even visually, no one is a match for Bond or Scaramanga. Yes, I love theming. After reading a bunch of reviews up on IMDb and a bunch of reviews up on Rotten Tomatoes, I really think that this is definitely one of the most underrated Bond movies of all time, and it's definitely worth watching. You're not thinking that. I sure am, boy. Never heard of Evil Knievel. I love this movie. 